it really matters. If it's here, we'll find it eventually. We can talk while we look. Now get started. I'll start with a conclusion I've come to. Our consciousnesses seem to be able to jump through time. No, sorry. Through time isn't really accurate. It's more like we move through worlds. Yes. I don't mean physical planets in this case. I'm talking about a whole different universe, really. Parallel worlds. Do you know about the many worlds interpretation? Hmm. Oh, well. I'll just explain it. Let's say... Hmm. I don't care what it is, but could you move? Scratch your head, cross your arms, put your hands on your hips, anything? I see. You crossed your arms just now, right? But you could have chosen to put your hands on your hips or clap. Now, maybe there are other Sigmas in other worlds who did all of those things. All of these worlds and realities are branching off from one another. The choices you could have made branched off from the moment you decided what you were going to do just now. Every moment you make a decision, another universe branches off, on and on into infinity. Each of those branches is an alternate world, a world where a version of you did something different. Haven't you ever thought about what life would have been like if you'd made different choices? What if you'd gone to this high school instead of that one? What if you hadn't started a study group? What if you hadn't told that girl you liked her? What if? What if? But are those what ifs really just what ifs? Or are there other worlds out there where you did those things? Anyway, that's the many worlds interpretation in a nutshell. I've simplified it a lot. Doesn't have to be human actions though. I just used your actions to make the explanation easier to grasp. The actions of a cat, the flight of a bee, the movement of a microorganism, even fluctuations in air temperature. All these can change history. Can you say for sure that you are? All of your actions are caused by the cells in your brain. If we go down a little further, then you could say all of your actions are the result of atoms or electrons or smaller particles we haven't even discovered yet. Are those atoms and electrons still you making a decision at that level? How different are you from the air? I'd say not much. Human existence is just one part of reality. Falling in love is like a tulip blossoming. A tulip blossoming is like a tornado forming in South America. See what I'm saying? The only thing that really matters is the action of the most elementary particles of matter. That's where history happens. That's where universes branch out. Hey, you stopped. Are you done with that shelf? Well, keep looking while I talk. How familiar are you with quantum physics? Never mind, don't answer that. I'll try and keep it simple for you. Hmm, let's see. Hey, hand me that box, will you? Also... Ah, there's a stuffed lion over there. Perfect. He's part of Felide, too. ready. Remember that book in the crew quarters about Schrodinger's cat? It relates to all this stuff I've been talking about. Anyway, come look at the box. This will only take a minute. Now look. What do you see? 
from now on, that's a cat. A living cat. This is important. Got it? Oh, man. This again? I find that hard to believe. Ugh. Fine. Maybe I can just ignore it. All right. What else do you see? Right. Now the weight is going to be radioactive material, and the jar of ink is full of poisonous gas. Idiot. It's not really full of gas. This is just hypothetical. Imagine that it's full of gas. So, what's the weight? And the jar of ink. Exactly. Good work. Now, there's one other thing you need to know about the jar. If it's struck by any of the alpha particles the radioactive material emits, it'll break. These particles are emitted randomly, but there's a 50% chance that one of them will come into contact with the jar over the course of an hour. So let's close the lid. And pretend an hour has passed. Here's the question. Is the cat inside of the box alive or dead? You can't open the box to check. And you can't hit the box. Obviously, you can't shake it either. It's also been soundproofed, so the cat could be howling up a storm in there and you'd never know. Basically, you have no idea what's going on inside the box. Do you remember what happens if the alpha particles hit the jar? And what if the jar doesn't break? Ha ha. And what are the chances of either of those things happening? Uh-huh. So, what's your answer? Is the cat alive or dead? Then guess. It's not hard. Alive or dead? <sighs> nope. You're wrong. That's wrong, too. The answer is that it's in a state where it is neither dead nor alive. It's an extrapolation of something we see at the atomic level. We don't know if an atom is spinning upward or downward until we measure it. Before it's measured, those two possibilities coexist. But as soon as the measurement is taken, obviously, only one possibility is the truth. That's what's happening with the alpha particles. Since we can't know when they were emitted or where, we only know the probability that they'll impact the jar. Because we can't observe anything that's happening in the box, that becomes the entire system. In other words, the box is like the atom. We don't know how the cat's life or death situation has resolved itself until we look at it. Until we do. It's just a bunch of possibilities. Do you get it? If the cat in the box is possibilities... Right! So, let's open the lid. And when we do, all the possibilities will collapse into a single truth. Meow. What a relief, huh? Looks like the cat's alive. Anyway, that's Schrodinger's cat. The many worlds interpretation is one theory for explaining that weirdness. Yeah, that's the idea. Looks like that cat tick of yours cleared up. Insane. Exactly. You've experienced it, haven't you? <laughs>